trends for a long time, from the fusion of the 90s to the tapas of the 2000s to the current farm to table, nose to tail, blah, blah, blah. I love it all. But you know what? Sometimes I prefer a traditional shit, like good old garlic bread that you get on the side of your spaghetti at the Italian-American restaurant in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to show you my Debbie Wonganized garlic bread. So step one, preheat your oven to 350. Now I'm going to prep my bread. Over here I have a gorgeous baguette. You don't have to use French bread, you know what I'm saying? You can use, you can use like a ciabatta, you can use a country bread, you know just make sure it's like relatively good quality, don't be using a white bread, okay? Next, we have the butter. In this pot, I have three tablespoons of melted butter and two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil. I'm going to add to that three cloves of garlic. Grated. Now, the reason why I grate and not chop is because I want the garlic to form a paste and become at one with the butter, okay? If you have bits of garlic, they're just gonna get burnt. Now I'm gonna add some herbs. I got some fresh parsley and some fresh oregano. You can do any combination you want. Parsley is a classic. And I'm just gonna roll it up and chop it up. Okay, nice and small. Add that to the butter. I love it. It's so retro with the speckles of green, isn't it? Love it. Now I have about this much oregano. Oregano is a little bit stronger than parsley, so I don't put too much. This is what it looks like when it's whole. Thought I would show you guys. Now I know what you're thinking. Can I use like dried herbs in this? Hell no. level, why not, with some Pecorino Romano cheese that I'm going to grate over the top. Now you can add Parmesan instead. Wowzers. Oh my goodness. Mm. It's everything you would imagine it to be and more. Chop is because I want this garlic to be pasty. 